we mentioned a few minutes ago, the House now closer to a consensus on health care reform. This as lawmakers get ready to head home for summer recess for some face time with voters. So how will they sell health care reform to their constituents? Joining me now, Congressman Trent Franks of Arizona. He's a member of the Republican Study Committee working to prevent waste, fraud and abuse. And we've got Democratic Congressman Elliot Engel of New York, a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, which, by the way, just passed the legislation. Thank you very much for talking to us both. All right. First of all, I want to go to you, Congressman Engel. You. Um, you were one of the Democrats uh, that is uh, in the Energy and Commerce Committee, and I, I want to know how you will plan on selling this vote to your constituents. Well, I'm, I'm saying what I've been saying, and that the uh, the American health care system is in trouble. We have 47 million Americans who are uninsured, and that number is going to uh, grow with each passing day. The, the current uh, system is just unsustainable because the costs are escalating so high. People with pre-existing conditions can't get health insurance, and people that lose their jobs live in constant fear of having no health insurance at all. So we need to make sure that every American has health insurance, that the insurance companies cannot reject you because you have a pre-existing condition and that they are not allowed to cherry pick which is only offer uh, contracts or, or policies to people who are well everyone needs to be covered and that's what we want to do and I think President Obama is right with his vision of saying that every American needs to be covered and that if you like the health care coverage you have now you can keep it you can keep your doctors no one is going to force you to change but 47 million Americans uninsured is going to be a thing of the past Congressman Franks, I want to hear what you have to say about well, that because I would imagine you're not going to be selling the same story to your constituents. No, you're right about that, Julie. You know, Republicans want uh, health care reform as well. We want something where every individual owns their own health care, where they have the choice of insurance companies, the choice of doctors, and for those who can't afford it, government could always offer a draft to allow them to buy the insurance of their choice. That would spur growth, uh, that would empower the patient, that would encourage the dignity of the patient, that would help the, the, the quality of care, and it would drive down the price. But under this bill, mm -hmm. uh, it will cost $800 billion new in taxes. That the, that the Democrats are pushing forward. Very few people understand what they are trying to do, and it takes uh, more and more people that understand it uh, have a greater and greater disdain for it. It could cost us 5 million jobs. It could push 118 million people off their existing insurance policy. And everywhere where we've seen government take over uh, things like other countries, it's caused the price to rise, not to drop. And the quality suffered because when people have a cold in, a, yeah. in say, England or Canada, they call a doctor. But when they have cancer or diabetes, they call a travel agent and want to come to America because mm -hmm. we still have the best system in the world. You took the words out of my mouth. Uh, Congressman Engel, you know, when it comes to quality, that's what many Americans fear. Those who are currently insured, will their quality go down when you've got so many people and so little doctors? Will they become overwhelmed and will, be, will we be seeing more and more patients waiting in long, long lines, waiting to see a doctor um, to be treated for such serious illnesses such as cancer? No, not at all. Um, and I think that uh, what my what my friend and, and colleague has said is, is the same uh, confusion uh, that I think the Republican Party has been saying for years to to confuse people, to scare people, to tell people that uh, they're going to not have coverage. What we know right now is this: there are 47 million Americans, and 80 percent of those people are working people and their families. Families. They have no coverage whatsoever. And that is going to grow because the health care costs have been growing far beyond the rate of inflation. And so we will find if we sit and simply do nothing and think we can just uh, not do any changes, we will find 50, 60, 70, and 80 million Americans without health coverage. People are going to lose their jobs, not have any kind of coverage. People who have cancer, which may be a pre existing condition, will find themselves without coverage. All we are attempting to do is this to ensure that every American has coverage, to make sure that the insurance companies right. uh, cannot decide who they want to cover and who they don't want to cover. I don't think the insurance companies, left to their own volition, which is what we have now, have any incentive to keep their premiums low. What's We're saying that if there is a public option, 
and the public option keeps the premiums low, the insurance companies will be forced to keep their premiums low All right, in order wait. to compete. What's Nobody's talking about a government me, takeover. I, I, I'm just, I, I, what's scary to me is, is, is how, you know, we've got countries like Australia, we've got countries like Canada, and it is a fact that they leave their countries when they are in need of good quality health care. What does that mean to all the Americans in need of good quality health care here in this country? Does that mean that well, we're going to have to, in other words, go overseas in order to get good quality health care? Because the entire public is insured, therefore the quality will... I, the reason I'm arguing this is because a lot of decisions are being made in Washington where it seems that the research isn't necessarily there, and then by the time we realize it, it's too late. I mean, you, you have to admit that, that there have been many bills that have been passed in Washington where uh, congressmen like yourself didn't even get a chance to read the bills before we thought if it would be good. I'm just a little concerned about well, this whole, you know, wanting to rush this whole thing and whether or not it might actually backfire. I'm going to give well, you both all, 10 seconds each because we got to okay. go. <laughs> We're not rushing it. Uh, it's actually uh, being slowed down a bit. When you're talking about Canada and Australia, you're talking about a single-payer plan, which, which I support, but that's not what we're talking about here. This plan is not a single-payer plan. This is a plan to make sure that every American is insured, and if you lose your job, you continue to be insured. You can keep the doctor you have now. You can keep the insurance policy you have now. It's not going to make it uh, harder to get insurance, and it's not going to lessen the quality of insurance insurance. To do nothing will absolutely lessen the quality because we can no longer sustain a situation right. where health care costs are growing in leaps and bounds far beyond the, the, uh, the price of inflation. Congressman Franks, I'll give you the final word. Uh, well, Julie, uh, I have a great deal of respect for my friend Elliot Engel. When he says that I'm trying to scare the American people, I'll just say, honestly, I'm scared. I'm scared for my two little babies. They're turning a year old here in a few days. And I think the American people should be scared to see government take over health care is probably one of the most dangerous things that we could do for it. And senior citizens should especially be cared, uh, scared because if, if this happens, you know, the clunkers uh, bill cost a uh, billion dollars, they said it ended up costing three billion. What happens to this one trillion dollar price tag? It could be three trillion. I just don't want the same people that are doing all these bailouts here lately running the health care insurance. I want that to, to be a free choice for my children and for the people in the future in this country. All right. Congressman Engel and Frank, thank you very, very much for talking to us. Fair and balanced debate. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. It is one of the great.